I so for this one, I literally just because somebody sent it to me, and I want to thank uh, you, whoever who you know who you are, if you sent it to me on Twitter. Um, and I I skipped through it really quick. I just like literally took it to like probably around the twenty minute mark to see just kind of get into it, and uh, the first thing I saw was Haley spray painting and the person was talking about freemason symbolism and i was like oh oh yeah that's the good stuff that's yep Uh uh-huh that's what i want to see okay so let's just dig right into here Our third friend in this trio has been with us through thick and thin. A friend that we have grown up together with. A friend that has impacted and shaped our character. Even inspired us to be greater. And then somehow along the way, we this discovered a is, this secret is, about this friend. That the image and character being presented to us is a lie. Is that? And in truth, the time we spend with I, this that, so-called friend. It's going to be an internet deep cut, but that looks like um, Momokun, who was... Momokun, who was just there, so. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, Thumb Warlord, this not stock, stock footage is, uh, is actually detrimental to our mental, oh, mind's eye. Thank you very much. and spiritual health. It would be hard to believe, because we've spent so much time under the impression and guise that this friend is... Off the bat, I love how just completely disparate all the stock footage is. Like, it's it's different aspect ratios, different, like, filters, different subjects. Like, none of it is really congruous with itself. You may have guessed who this friend is. Perhaps that sounds absurd to some, to think of a fictional character as someone this special to When was this made? But for Seven many, days ago, okay. so many others, it's all too true. Spider-Man is my friend. In fact, he's the oldest one that I can remember. I like to think of Spider-Man as everybody's friend, really. My entire life, I would adventure with him through comic Whoa. books late at night in bed. Experience There's no way, this, this got copyright claimed. Through cartoons and movies. He would come with me to school on my backpack. He would welcome me at home on posters on the wall. No, he I get it, bro. He would play with me as an action figure, a Lego, a No, you would play toy. with... He would... I guess you would play with him as an action figure. But I get... He would play with me as an... Okay, I get it. I get what you're saying. That's just a weird way to word that. A bank, bust, or bobblehead. And he would join me out in the world in my shirt or shoes or socks or hat. Friends came and went, but Spider-Man was always there. And he always entertained me. He would spend as much time with me as I possibly how is the How's the volume what other hitting everybody? Do that? For so many people, Spider-Man is that friend. He's one of Vigilant the Christian. I'll have to... Is that the other so the other cat you were talking to about? To the accusation that this friend is not who we think he is. How do you deal with that heartbreak? Even further, how do you tell his other friends the truth, knowing that you would also be breaking their hearts? My friends... There is no easy way to do this. There is no easy way to reveal or accept this truth. But it's the truth all the Video same. Video can be a bit louder. And the truth okay. will set us free, even if we don't yet realize that we're in bondage. And as much as this pains me to say, if you think that this ends with just okay. Spider-Man, that be, you're huh, wrong. Better. But we have to start somewhere. And never has this truth been more clear to me until playing Insomniac and Marvel Spider-Man 2. So I believe it is my God-given duty to walk you through this game and reveal what may have not been clear to you if you've played it. See, see, I, my approach is I save the dramatic stuff for the end. I try and like tie it all in together to, to bring you in. He's, he's just hitting it right at the beginning. So we start with an absolutely epic sequence with the Sandman. And right away, it's so easy to venerate the technical marvel of all this game offers. Now, I have no interest in praising this game or reviewing it as if it's just another piece of entertainment. Dog. Dog. But I do need to emphasize that this game is exciting. 
Nobody who is interested or invested in this kind of media wants to give it up, which is the reason we'll avoid anything and everything that may point okay, us towards a not Dog playing is to or attack participating me. in these I, exciting and... I do love this already, though. He's making, like, this is almost like an incel, like, anti-porn argument where he's like, the, you're, you're making excuses for why you don't want to give this thing up, why you don't want to give up video games. Love that. Love that. Pleasurable experiences. This game is fun to play. Yeah, okay. I mean, look at this. Of course this is cool. This is not easy to give up. Do you realize how big this game is in the world? It sold more than 5 million copies in the first 11 days. At the time of making this video, it's currently the fastest selling try. game in PlayStation history. How else would you lure something into a trap? If not with something desirable, something like candy. We know candy is colorful, alluring, childlike, and it tastes so sweet. But we also know what happens to the body once we swallow it. And that's not the part we like to think about very much. What? It so what happens when we swallow this game? Well, the first thing that we should note starts around here. Uh, oh, whoop, first, see that eye? <laughs> Oh my god, this guy is cooking! He is, like, drawing a comparison. I think he's drawing an intentional comparison between Spider-Man and, like, attempting to groom through, like, offering candy. That is so strange. But also, I love the fact that he is just looking at footage and being like, Oh, wait, you see that eye? Tell me about the eye. Oh, tell me about the eye. We're gonna be spider-pilled after this. Oh, he's gonna, you better believe he's gonna show the pride flag. Absolutely. There's a 0% chance he doesn't. I will eat, I will eat this little spaceman if he doesn't. Hour, an hour and a half into the game, they bring us here. They get me to focus on these people. Ain't that something? Oh, cool. They're throwing a Captain America shield. So now they have my mind racing about all of the possible appearances and connections this game will have to the greater Marvel. I, see, I don't know why, like at that point, I would just be like, oh, cool. I didn't even notice I was a Captain America shield. Marvel Universe completely distracted from all of this. An entire wall so clearly and intentionally littered with Freemason imagery and symbolism. So immediately they want you to know where this game comes from and who it serves. So you have the Eye of Providence or the All-Seeing Eye. It's just an eye. When he's talking about the All-Seeing Eye, it's just a fucking eye. Like, so any eyeball which is incredibly common in art and artistic imagery. Okay, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let National Treasure cook. It's depicted within a triangle, which is visible here, among other educating things. The all-seeing eyes are what all of our favorite celebrities are referencing when they cover up one eye or they- Again, I, I love compilations like this, where he's like, oh, look at all these, again, I've been, because I've been knee deep, it's actually a, a totally valid preamble talking about the, the anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Because I've been knee deep in just like all the conspiracies lately for, for research. You see a lot of people doing stuff like this where they will take pictures and be like, it, they, the transvestigators do it all the time. Where they'll be like, ah, see, look at all these celebrities doing this same thing. But it's celebrities from like a 20 to 30 year period not taken by the same photographers not taken for the same magazines like yeah there's actually when you think about it there's a lot of celebrities out there have every single one of them covered up their eye no but it's also scattered all over this game. And don't worry, it's also included in the first one multiple times. That didn't look like all the, And so in uh, case you're thinking, I don't know, this is a coincidence, or it's not the same thing, or it's just some irrelevant background stuff. Uh-huh. I just want to point this out. And to be honest, I'm embarrassed about how long it took me to actually notice this in the game. When you're playing as Miles Morales... I love that. I'm embarrassed by how long it took me to make this shit up. <laughs> That's so good. I'm embarrassed by how long it took me to realize this fake shit that I'm freaking out about. That's... <laughs> Look at the top of the screen. Look at the status bar. Okay, uh -huh. you have his health, you have his webs, Oh, you have... shit! Hmm. His invisibility bar, right? Look at the symbol. It's his camouflage power. 
okay, then what does the, the down triangle with a heart mean? Like, tell me, tell me what's the conspiracy about that, buddy? It, it doesn't have one because of all these symbols, this is the only one you care about. But that should mean that everything else also has a, a symbol. Otherwise, it's just one out of four that you're choosing to be super meaningful. If you'll remember a couple minutes ago, this was his big get. This was him going, if you think this is a coincidence, look at this. Something that can literally only be chalked up by a rational mind to coincidence. Continue. Continue. I'm, I'm, They're I'm letting invisible. him cook. Get it? So this whole game, the entire thing, head to toe, they are not even hiding. It's right here in front of our face. But they've camouflaged themselves so well that we just it's refuse to see it or refuse to care. So back to this early part of the game, right? When they're first revealing themselves. In this first revealing themselves. There's there's uh, eyeballs in a sunflower and one triangle. There, there are also mountains and a rainbow. Oh, rainbow. That's satanic for sure. That is satanic for surezies. Oh, this is gonna be a ride. This is gonna be a ride, guys. This is and gonna be a ride. They have it depicted in a circle, which is another symbol of Freemasonry, the point within a circle. Oh, this is the one I saw. You have stars with faces on them, which could be a reference to multiple things. Stars are very revered among. <laughs> this is, this guy's not good at this. Cause you, you don't wanna come into conspiracy theorizing being like it could be multiple things you want to have a clear idea like like the thing he did before where he's like ah a circle obviously this is the the well-known freemason symbol of a dot inside of a circle like that's very stupid but whatever but if you're looking at a up facing star and then you're like this could this could be a reference to multiple things and then you show something that looks nothing like it as one of the first things that's your case buddy come on masons the blazing stars also notice how literally every shape to him you got we got stars circles triangles i bet he's gonna say something about a square these preschool classes out here being satanic as hell these stars representing the individuals who were enlightened by freemasonry if we look at revelation chapter 12 it's about <laughs> satan's rebellion in heaven and in okay. verses three to four it talks about a dragon swiping away a third of the stars out of the sky, an allegory representing one third of the angels falling and becoming demons, the demons that these people serve. But regardless, it doesn't matter, because this game is literally littered with all of this symbolism. In I fucking love the demons that these people serve, and it's pictures of these goofy little star people. And then the mission itself is called, take a photo of a New York story to sell to Rappi. So my camera can either aim here, at the Captain America Shield Frisbee game that goes on for eternity. Or, uh, no, uh, nothing really over here. Oh, this big colorful wall with Can you explicit take a picture of that? intentional imagery all over it. A New York story. Nope. You... This should snap us awake. Okay, um, so when you do the camera thing, it, it shows a green reticle. Like if you go back and watch this footage, when you take a picture of, because that's it's a collectible in the game, and they they intersperse those collectibles throughout the game. That wasn't something that actually counted. That was just something you could have taken a picture of, like he could have taken a picture of like nothing behind him. That was that that doesn't actually count for what he's saying. It's just a very man, damn dude. This is no longer Got entertainment. Him. It's being fed to us now. So we need to start looking at this game through the lens of Masonic propaganda. Now the first question we should ask is how long until this thing gets mystical? Because these people are- How long until this superhero game deals with mystical stuff? Dude, dog, homie, friend, pal, buddy, champ, chief. I... Okay. Okay. ...are obsessed with mysticism. Why? Because God forbids it. And these people are enemies of God. Let's look at Deuteronomy 18. 
Oh, okay. No, this is good. I'm having. I hope everybody else is having a good time. I'm having a great time. Omen. So Miles is tracking Black Cat, and here's the first clue to what she's found. It's an ancient wand of sorcery. And if you've never seen these symbols before... Okay, it's also the Wand of Watum, which, like Agamotto and a whole bunch of other little things you should know, is a reference to Doctor Strange, if, if you're a Marvel fan. Like, him saying Wand of Watum, I was like, oh shit, Doctor Strange! And Doctor Strange doesn't ever show up. But you were you were also talking at the beginning, dude, about how, like... You know, uh, like you you were excited for what other cameos and possibilities. This is this is the thing that you should have been talking about. They're called sigils, and sigils are pictorial signatures attributed <laughs> to demons. And in magical rituals, these sigils are used in the summoning of these beings. They are the pictorial equivalent of a demon's true name. According to a translation of the Mystic Arcana, that wand is. Old. We're talking BC old. Supposedly so this weapon of magic and sorcery is ancient, before Christ. And this kind of magic has been used in the world by beings such as these and the creatures that they serve since the dawn of creation. Uh, I'm having a really hard time telling if he's talking about the real world or the fake world. And I think he might be talking about the real world. They try and convince us that magic doesn't exist by secreting it through entertainment, which concretes the idea that it's all fantasy. Oh my god, dude. Every sentence, I'm sorry, I keep pausing. Every sentence is like dumber than the last. Uh, he is saying that the reason that, that, that he's going with predictive programming. He is saying that the reason they put magic in this thing is to convince us that it's fiction and fake. Again, if you apply this logic to one thing, by necessity of your argument, you need to apply it to the whole thing. So this would also mean, like you, you are just picking and choosing this one thing. So I could just as well, using that logic, say, okay, well, obviously spider people are real. People with the, the proportional strength and abilities of a spider are real. Why else would they put them in fiction to convince us they're not real? Duh. ...divine law that God commands them to be revealed so that we can see it and get out. But it's also their own obsession with themselves, pride. They want you to know what they've done. Got it. And if you follow these missions, there's just always something strange lurking around the corner. It's going to be biblical. You bet it is. That's good. And then the murals that are all over the city. It couldn't just be like they have a bunch of artists working at Insomniac who just want to like draw and doodle or have drawn and doodled cool shit and that they want to put everywhere. It couldn't be that they're trying to emulate street art, which is incredibly diverse, both in just color and style and form. No, 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 no. Freemason symbolies. City. My goodness. So many of them are really weird and very revealing. There are a lot of spiral symbols that are spread around this game. Spirals have been outed by the FBI as known symbols used by pedophiles to identify sexual preferences. Literally, by, by his definitions, we are now up to, here are the shapes that are insidious, that you cannot use in art, otherwise it's Freemasonism, or Satanic, or pedophiles, or all three, I guess. Uh, spirals, circles, triangles, stars. I forget if he actually said squares or if I made that one up. Uh, spiral, circle, square, stars, snow, spirals, circles, triangles, stars. I forgot them. I'm forgetting them all already. I mean, just take a look at this. What? Just take a look at this thing that's not the same symbol it's it's completely inverted it's turned around it's not even the same style like what are you talking about so finally when it's time to get the symbiote peter gets stabbed and dies and then he gets possessed by this thing which brings him back to life and it feels like a complete mockery of god and how jesus tells us we need to be born again it also feels reminiscent of the flame talking about rebirth you fight with it for the first time and the whole sequence you're controlling I am, is this is at you just some kind of monster 
The take here is clearly demonic possession. Granting you so Fatia, I don't. There's the no way soul, somebody control, would go this stand. far for this long it's for actually sapphire. Disgusting. Another creature living on you. This dark, evil, slimy entity feeding off of you and influencing your life. I'm going to lose May's house because of them and Craven. Kill Craven. Save us, Christian yes, morals. Yes, the black suit is demonic, us. and the way you put it on is through sin. You first put it on, and it feels really good. You experience things you don't think you can experience anywhere else, and it makes you think, "Wow." Isn't this what life is all about? Feeling like this? This good? But it comes what at such a cost, and it takes so much more than it gives. Talking about? Because it's not natural, and it's not from God. This is not the Holy Spirit within us. This is something that's attached to us. I... It so clearly unlocks the deepest, darkest impulses of the soul. The hatred. You're too weak to get- Yeah, that's all, that's all, like, pretty explicit in the story, my dude. Like, that's all, I can't- Control back, aren't you? The pride. It makes me a better Spider-Man. Insecurity. I'm the hero here, not you. Envy. What's so great about the new Spider-Man? I love how he's just Anxiety. going down the explicit themes yourself, of the story Lord. now and saying, this is Every like God. Part of yourself imaginable, bringing you to the lowest pit of humanity. It's sickening, and yet so scarily close to home. Like this yell. I mean, not intentionally. Coming think. from the depths of you. I scream like that in rage. And when I do, I know it's not me. It's demonic oppression. Haven't you ever been so angry and furious, ah. or just in a bad oh, mood for oh, no oh. particular reason? And you feel the part of yourself that is experiencing this attached rage, and you just allow it. I'm Convince sorry. It's you. Uh, okay. It's you. Wrong. Pause. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Um. Did you just say that you have screamed like an alien demon monster because you were so full of rage because of demonic oppression? Uh, yeah, I really, I've lost the, I, like, I was following him and what he was saying and what he was laying out, but his, and this is a problem with a lot of conspiracy theorists, is you need to really think out the lore of your theory. Like, you need to have it be cogent and cohesive, because what he's doing here is just a conspiracy that continues to wrap back in on itself. And it doesn't make any sense because of that. Because he's not clearly delineating if it's all predictive programming on all sides of the morality presented here, then it doesn't make any sense. Because you're depicting bad things as good, good things as good, bad things as bad, and bad things as good. And you're trying to say that all of that combined is bad because they're trying to, to program you to accept this way of life. But the, the points you've linked together don't Actually, that's not the, the conclusion one should draw. Where do we think these things come from? We play games like this with all of these strange subliminal things that go beyond our understanding. Look at the scene. Harry's praying to his mom. And then the demon that's attached to him uses do? his mom's voice to lure him Don't be scared, honey. into doing whatever kind of sinister temptation the, the demon's trying to get him to, to do. do what we've always wanted. We show you. This has happened to me so many times, specifically with my mother's voice. And it what? leads me to something like sleep paralysis. This is real spiritual demonic stuff. This isn't just a game. So all of these things that we're consuming into our diet, into- Dog, okay, you are dropping your real life experiences with demons way too far into this. Like, did you, you, this is the most I've ever seen a lead be buried. 40 minutes in. We're gonna go back really quick. Where do we think these things come from? We play games like this with all of these strange subliminal things that go beyond our understanding. Look at the scene. Harry's praying to his mom. And then the demon that's attached to him uses do? his mom's voice to lure him Don't be scared, honey. into doing whatever we kind of sinister temptation the, the demon's trying to get him to, to do. do what we've always wanted. We're going to heal the world. How? Let me show you. This has happened to me so many times, specifically with my mother's voice. And it usually leads me to something like sleep paralysis. This is real spiritual demonic stuff. This isn't just a game. So all of these things that we're consuming into our diet, into our temple, the music we listen to, the movies that we watch, the food that we eat, they're telling us where it comes from. Look at the map of this game. The Mac Shack is satanic. We have eyeballs and triangles, the spiral pedophile symbol, crystals and hellfire. Whatever else any of this is, it's the entire game. Do you see it yet? 
These people hate us. They're not doing this for our entertainment. They're doing this for our enslavement. What? All they want to do is destroy what God has done and sever the Holy Spirit from us by any means necessary. They'll give us whatever it requires, distract us by any means necessary, make the coolest game possible, not for love of the art, but for this one singular purpose, to sever us from the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so by participating in these things, we allow legal right for these spirits to come and oppress us and attach to us like symbiotes. Duck Mutcher, I was watching your stream clips on YouTube and went to see where you streamed only to find you live. Glad I caught the screen, but I have no idea what's going on. We just got done watching a hour long, almost hour long video on how Spider-Man 2 is um, satanic and Freemason propaganda. And now we're going to continue our trend of uh, Christian conspiracy theorists just imprinting their ideology onto media that probably has nothing to do with it the hidden meaning of subnautica i think this will take us through to the end no don't spoil subnautica i i am so curious about how there is the lego movie ties into this already i'm so curious hello subnautica is an open world survival game that was released in 2014 it was well received, offering a fresh premise and an imagination. Really, really quick, that like opening with the full thing into game footage and a uh, like rant sauna. Unnecessary jump scare, sir. Unnecessary jump scare. Imaginative bioluminescent world. The gameplay experience is compelling. Really do, as it contrasts I relaxing do not and beautiful care for the style of, and I, I try not to do this, and I hope people will notice. I try to not do the thing that it's like. The opening of the video and a lot of video essays do this especially when it comes to games because you want to you want to give a viewer a, a comprehensive idea of what you're talking about what you're dealing with so i get why but so many videos and video essays start off with just a comprehensive summary of what the game is and i feel like there are better ways to uh just like pepper that through a little bit like a light sprinkling and it's uh, yeah, Swain402, how are you going to be talking about satanic conspiracies in such a boring-ass manner? Python ...that you collaborate with in order to release immunity from the infectious bacteria onto the entire planet. Now, those who have beaten Subnautica and who are already familiar with my Lego movie analysis may have spotted a pattern. I explained in the Lego movie analysis how the plot was an allegory for an inverted retelling of the Garden of Eden, with God as the tyrant villain and the serpent being depicted as the hero for gifting humanity with the forbidden fruit that grants intellect, free will, and transhumanist ascension. Subnautica is another analogy for the same story. Hold on. Buddy, you can't you can't just drop that and then continue on. You can't... Uh, ooh, uh. Okay, I might have to watch that one too. It acts as another Luciferian tract. You collaborate with an ancient Leviathan to cure... Okay. The opening several minutes of this leave nothing to the late. Like, do not lead to somebody thinking that this is what the rest of it's going to be. Oh my God. For corrupted planet, Robinson comes from son of Robin with Robin meaning fame or bright. Robinson could also be a nod to Robinson Crusoe, but the name of Robin is important enough to the developers that the protagonist of the Subnautica sequel This guy, he's doing Robin what the other also. guy did. So Bright shows up in he the He is just saying this could be this, even though they're not or this related. could be this, so or it could Robinson, be this. It's like, or if you're brave son of Bright, make up your mind on a conspiracy the theory. I hate Aurora. I don't like when my conspiracy theorist is a waffling bitch. Make up a mind, go in a direction. Don't give me this, it could be shit. Come on means light in the sky or dawn and in roman mythology aurora was the goddess of the dawn nice nice she was also the mother of lucifer lucifer being light bringer or morning star so the goddess of dawn mother of lucifer is transporting the son of bright through space until they are shot down and crash well, luke willoughby this guy's this voice has the emoting the ability of a dead person the devil described by many names was an angel thrown out of heaven for leading rebellion against uh yeah can we get a mm, in chat for the the hot lady god similarly the player's character is cast down from space and crash lands on the planet you could say that the planet is trapped in the fifth day of creation Thank with birds and sea creatures, but no evidence of land animals or humans <laughs> native to the planet. The planet is also corrupted by a bacterial infection called Kara, 
which is the fault of the precursors who also set up the cannon that shot down the spaceship. This is an important feature when we compare it to the two different interpretations of the Garden of Eden. In the conventional interpretation, a perfect God creates the world and calls it good. Humanity Look how he just walks used the closely apple with symbol. God in the paradise of the garden, where they can choose to either obey or disobey him. What? He tells them not to eat the forbidden fruit what because is... it will cause them to die. And with a little prompting from the serpent, they choose to disobey God and eat it. This, this is the most confusing fucking God and animatic I've ever seen. Death to enter the world. God later intervenes in history by coming to earth as Jesus Christ in order to die by crucifixion, to defeat death by resurrecting, and to return anyone to God who yields their life to him, and to judge anyone who doesn't. What? Why? Or in the inverted interpretation, God, who is sometimes referred to as the Demiurge, is an evil tyrant who crafted the material world. Since what he is bad, what he makes is... Where the fuck does this... Like, what is the... He's talking about demiurges and demogorgons. Like, what? Where is this coming from? Why? I don't. I need. I need a source here, buddy. Like, you can't. You can't just inculcate me with the deep lore like that. Serial killer letter core. It's also bad because it reflects him. Rather than being paradise, the bad religion logo. in Eden, humans were the demiurges' so slaves with no free will until the serpent liberated humanity by offering them the forbidden fruit. Eli Esch, we are watching somebody explain how uh, Subnautica and possibly the Lego movie are subliminal, satanic, Luciferian propaganda. God or the Demiurge had told them not Stop to Stop saying Demiurge it, so seriously. Not because he knew better, but because he didn't That's want the most fucking ridiculous thing to say. Like, you cannot be taken seriously when you're using the word Demiurge unironically what do you stop it come up with a different word for it i would rather hear like bad god i'd rather hear shadow the dog the god dark god inverted god than the demi urge stop it stop control over them since he wanted to rule over them and treat them kind of like their lego toys forever when it comes to subnautica it takes place on a planet that was corrupted by the same entity that trapped you there but you eventually discover that you can fix it if you can figure out how to collaborate with the Emperor Leviathan, who communicates to you telepathically. I feel like that essentially makes uh, enough of a case what that was this going is a Luciferian tract, condemning God and promoting the serpent as the hero. But let's keep going. In order to find the CM... He's like, I think it's enough that you, uh, you interact with this giant alien sea beast. Obviously, as we can all tell, this is satanic. But let's let's keep going. Yes, I love this guy. For Leviathan, you have to explore the ancient uninhabited precursor structures. Oh yeah, I remember. These structures remember contain Canvas. teleporters. I played like ten hours of Subnautica when it came to Switch and then just plane. never picked it up again. The precursor Switch, really structures good port, primary by the way. architectural really good aesthetic port of is the shape of a cube, often with tentacles coming out of it. It's very visually similar to the micromanagers I mentioned in the Lego movie. Come on, sing micromanagement! Where Lego characters capable of original thought are imprisoned in order to have their creative capacity I stolen gotta, from them. I gotta the see. Precursors in Subnautica and the micromanagers in the Lego movie are both representing the same occult concepts, which is referred to in lay terms as the, the Saturn, Saturn Mind, Mind Control Cube. Cube. The Saturn Cube is a huge topic. Okay, he did that as a joke, but A. That just he's getting into like almost time cube shit now b remember earlier when we were talking about how they see literally any shape now chalk it up on the board cubes and squares along with stars spirals triangles and circles all evil are you fuck uh, uh, mm. No, tell me about the, the Saturn well Cube. Tell me about to try Saturn's and Cube. It for us. Thank you, official Jeff versus. from IronAgeArchive.com explains it this way. Over the course of history, different religions will have different interpretations of what both Saturn and the Cube represent. But we'll also find similar themes and archetypes that overlap among the different beliefs. What? For example, many ancient cultures thought of Saturn as the furthest celestial body from the sun. And so Saturn was a symbol for darkness and the opposite principle to Thank the Thank you very much the for the sticker. And in the Greek Whole Roman pantheon, Saturn was synonymous with the Titan Cronus, it just makes me who was laugh. the father of the Olympian gods, who themselves represent this kind of immediate solar presence. But Cronus's name was also linked sometimes synonymously with Kronos, 
the personification of time. So Cronus or Saturn was also a type of father time who ate his children to prevent himself from being overthrown by them. So from this we can see where some Gnostics, Neoplatonists, and other occult groups take Saturn to symbolize or represent the oppressive Demiurge, an oppressive father deity who has trapped us inside the quote-unquote darkness of time and space by swallowing us whole. And they then preach this end goal of enlightenment, so that we can escape the belly of time and space and become reunited with the light, which is ultimately our destiny just as Cronus overthrew his father and his son later overthrew him. Meanwhile, the cube is also a shape that represents three dimensions. Okay, so I love here we're getting already, we're talking overlapping things because they're they're talking about the Demiurge in terms of, which again, they are taking old Greek religion and philosophy, overlapping it with Christian theocracy and explanations about like, like the, the Demiurge being an inverted form of God or satanic. So already you've got polytheistic religion that is somehow imprinting onto monotheistic religion. And that's, that's the Saturn part of it. But now we're going to, I can't wait to hear about the cube and how else they try and fucking make this work. In addition to that, an anonymous friend of ours describes the black cube this way. The Saturn cube can be described as a hive mind god. The metagod. Have you heard of Metatron? The Saturn cube is the entrapped physical world which they wish to undo. To get an all-flowing hive of uh. all minds combined into a greater intelligence. The hive is the new messiah they wish to bring about. This can be described succinctly as a metaphorical Tower of Babel. What? You might say that the beast of revelation is the internet. Note that the true meaning of communism what? is the anti-individual hive mind. Okay, I was about to, because everybody is talking about how, like, uh, you're lost. And I was about to, like, lay it down and break it down sweet style for you and be like, okay, here's what's actually happening. And then he's talking about the beast of revelation being the internet and the true meaning of communism. And honestly, y'all, I am, I am just as lost as you his children together, essentially enjoining them. Saturn cut Eden apart with his sickle and they wish to repair it. This repair rejoins all of humanity into one meta-being, using others as a sacrificial holocaust. You could think of the movie The Matrix as the end goal. So in summary... Again, dog shit predictive programming if the thing that you're depicting is depicted as a bad thing. Like, what? Contham, thank you very much for following. I'm sorry to everybody who's just stumbling across the stream now. Uh, $2 from Mighty Mulatto. The Borg Cube now makes sense. It's predictive programming. Of course it does. Saturn worship has the end goal of joining humanity. Uh, yeah, Lane, Kaplan, this is ostensibly about Subnautica. Yeah. Form. To add to this, Saturn is often associated with the cube because of its hexagon on the northern pole. A hexagon can be seen as a three-dimensional cube trapped in a two-dimensional representation, similar to humans being higher-dimensional beings that are trapped by the demiurge within the dimensions of space and time. So it's no coincidence that to hex someone in witchcraft is to bind them with magic. Or maybe even that Orthodox Jews bind themselves with the Teflon, or that the Kaaba at Mecca is a giant black cube that Muslims circle around, much like the rings of Saturn. Even the United Nations Meditation Center also features a black cube, as well as many other statues and structures that are found throughout the world. Uh, this is so... I'm fucking... I'm like... I, I don't understand how anybody, ideally, what a good conspiracy theorist would be doing would be peppering these things through and explaining them as to draw more people in. Like, a good conspiracy theorist, in insofar as there is such a thing. But he's going so fast through these things that the only way you can get anything out of this is if you already know what the fuck they're all 
talking about. They're like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, as we all know, Islam, which worships the moon deity. So, of course, they're they're circling around like the rings of Saturn. The, the, uh, as we all know. Uh, and there's all these black statues everywhere because, of course, the box is a satanic symbol. It's a symbol of the Freemasons and Freemason ideology and the Demiurge. This is, this is very basic, very basic stuff. But instead, like everybody here, I feel like my goddamn brain is melting because I haven't, I don't, I don't have the knowledge of the rest of this, how this all fits together. Like, like they are giving you the pieces of a puzzle that they are like mashing together on their own. Like, even though the pieces don't fit correctly, they're, they're like, wedging them in there so they, they just, like, loosely hang together. And then they're showing you this tapestry and being like, can't you see it? Can't you see the image? And it's like, fucking no. I have no idea what I'm looking at. This is just ridiculous. A more notable inversion in this retelling is the role of death. In Eden, there was no death. God Look, warned Adam and Eve that if they ate from the forbidden fruit that they would die. They instead listened to the serpent who told them that that wouldn't happen, which leads us to today, where people still die and the transhumanists are still desperately clinging to the idea that we will use technology to evolve past death and become gods. In Subnautica, it isn't paradise. Death is already corrupting the world, but eating the forbidden fruit is what is required to overcome death and launch humanity off planet back into the heavenly cosmos where they belong. Again, like the transhumanists are expecting to use the rest of humanity as fuel to do. In the final cutscene of the game, the dead Sea Emperor Leviathan speaks to you telepathically one last time, saying, We are different, but we go together. And just as the union of your efforts healed the entire planet you just left, you will now carry the both of you into the heavens. So it is, as above, so below. Once the game credits roll by, an audio clip from the character's employer can be heard, welcoming him to his home planet, saying, Welcome home to all Terra. Permission to land will be granted once you have settled your outstanding balance of one trillion credits. This is a clever joke because they expect to charge you for all the materials you scavenged and used to escape the planet. But it also appropriately suggests that both interpretations of the Garden of Eden understand that someone is keeping track of your actions, that there is a debt, that someone's going to have to pick up the tab four in order for any of us to make it home when the credits start to roll by on our lives. So that was the plot of Subnautica. Much like the Lego movie, while I disagree with the worldview contained in its plot, I still really enjoyed the game. There's no denying that it was an extremely well-crafted work of art. Sorry, it took me God. a long time to beat, and even though the game is primarily just grinding for resources, it was an interesting enough world to explore okay. that that grind didn't feel like a chore. Okay, I'm gonna, I need to, um, yeah, let's go. We gotta, I gotta, see, I gotta see the fucking. This video, we're gonna talk about the 2014 Lego movie and how it's more than just a whimsical adventure story, but it's also a carefully crafted allegory for a worldview that its viewers may not expect. <laughs> this is Nathan Smith. Welcome to the symbolic Lego world. It's common for groups with different ideas to battle over the meaning of symbols and characters. The clearest example of this is in the world of meme creation. When a meme finds attention, different factions struggle to convey an interpretation that best portrays their ideas. If an interpretation taps into something that people agree with, it naturally gets spread and it becomes the meaning of the symbol. It continues to get reproduced and revised until Collective society has so thoroughly explored the idea that they then move on to the next subject of attention. In some instances, an original artist may even lose control of their work and have it taken away from them and repurposed into something that they didn't intend or might even disagree with. The battle over the meaning behind symbols borrows from all facets of popular culture. Just ridiculous. Anyway, back to this. It usurps its original oh. meaning away from the ancient creator. There's no shortage of religious symbols that can be found all over popular culture from various different traditions. But some stories offer more than just a nod. Yeah, his, his editing style got religion. way, way the whole better purpose with the, of the, story the next is couple to present of a carefully crafted allegory that comprehensively contains an entire belief system. Handing out religious pamphlets or tracts. That is not, that's not the point of a story. The point of a story is not to, like, okay. I feel like we got to the bottom of it. I figured out your problem is that you think every story 
is meant to be a little box that contains an entire thought process and belief system when sometimes a story is just the story, dude. Like, what? That is not the purpose of every story. I can't. Traditionally used to serve this function. But <laughs> in the modern world, what is a more effective Cthulhu. method of proselytization than a blockbuster oh, family-friendly movie? It's more than just an attempt to sell you more toys. It's an attempt to sell you on a worldview. It's a tract. And the question what is, what do you mean sell me more toys? Worldview? On its most basic surface I'll level, buy anyway. the Lego story is about they don't an need to ordinary sell me. I'll Lego just construction them. worker who is thought to be the special. He is recruited to join a quest to stop an evil tyrant from gluing the Lego universe into Bible eternal stasis. I'm pretty stasis. sure Godzilla is in the Bible. to go into the pretty deeper sure. meaning of the movie. Pretty sure. We need to go back to one of the most ancient stories that the Lego movie is mirroring. And we need to discuss how two different groups have interpreted that story completely differently. I feel like maybe I should touch that. So it's not my intention to discuss whether the Garden of Eden is meant to be taken as a historical literal story or a figurative symbolic story or some kind of combination somewhere in between or both simultaneously. <laughs> uh, what we're going to discuss is how a person interprets the story, who they see to be the, the heroes and the villains and who they're sympathetic to. Perfect, infinite God, and he's good. He creates good. the universe. He creates uh -huh. the material world, and he also creates the spiritual realm. Okay, he's, spiritual he's going into beings. explaining and stuff again. I need, because I need he is some, good, what he creates more sauce here. is also good. And at the apex of his creation Oh my God, he takes so humanity. long. ...of the past, he's old outdated like like this is i'm i'm taking the like sorry that happened or whatever i don't i'm not going to read all that did ideas that were meant to evolve beyond and you know he's jealously trying to prevent that from happening and in this interpretation it's the same video. since he's not good what he creates the material world is also not good it's a dilapidated work of art from a... No, Oregano, I think you're right. He's just doing the irritating thing where someone breaks down the entire story to show how it follows the hero's journey, but with the Adam and Eve story. Yeah, it's like, why why do that? Like, I don't know. I, I feel like that is just wasting time in a video. It's, I, I try not to do just summations of shit unless I really need to in a game. So in this framework, uh, humanity was never meant to have free will or intelligence or any capacity for creativity like robots on autopilot who only exist to serve this evil being and in this framework there's there's spiritual beings as well and one of these beings like you could say it enters into a snake or it motivates the snake or right, it is gonna, the snake i want i want more lego movie are we leave the collective trance Doug, and decide to go find the rest of the master builders the, lego the lord movie. business's henchmen show up and attempt to capture them and there's a chase while they're running away Oddly enough, even crocodiles have sirens on their head, like they're supporting Lord Business and our characters are rebelling and trying to escape nature itself. <laughs> it's a joke. It's it's a stupid sight gag. It's it's a cartoon. It's ridiculous for the sake of being ridiculous. Does this guy watch a Roadrunner cartoon and be like, and oddly enough, the the coyote crashes into the side of a mountain, which is almost as if the, the coyote himself is rebelling against against nature. It's like, wh what are you saying? Dog, could you chew like just a little bit louder, please? That would be so rad of you. She actually stops. They drive up a rain. Oh, much to think about. Makes you think. There's a rainbow here for this fictional land in a children's movie that's meant to be all colorful and bright. And then there's rainbows on sidewalks. Rainbow and get to cloud cuckoo land. The rainbow takes them to this realm of discombobulated nonsense. It's non-binary, a spectrum. There's no... What? what? Uh, 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 okay. Uh, of the things I didn't expect to come next, Baphomet and calling Cloud Cuckoo Land non-binary is... Uh... Borders or boundaries, just complete self-identification. It's anarchy. In the words of the movie, there's no government, no babysitters, no bedtimes, no frowny faces, and self-admittedly, no consistency. Any idea is a good... It's meant to be 
a, a literal interpretation of like a place where a child can just have their imagination and let it run wild because that, that's the entire point of the film that the antagonist, the dad, learns at the end is that sometimes it's okay that everything is not always in perfect order. Let, I'm, I'm assuming, I realize I'm assuming a lot that this guy would understand the very clear message of a movie for children, but um, I don't think he does. He wants which you repress. And all the while in their happy world, there's this ominous eye that watches them. They hold a meeting that important historical figures and characters from other intellectual properties attend. And we meet Metalbeard who shares his story. Metalbeard attempted to contend with the Lord and was blown apart. He had to merge with items around him in order to have a body. You could say that he's become the metal that mixes with the clay at the foot of the statue. He is also the How? personification what? of transhumanism which is a belief that mankind will merge with technology to evolve beyond its physical and mental limitations. Here, you know the funny thing about transhumanism is it's something that really only gets brought up by these dorks. Like, it's not something that a lot of people actually care or actually think about. It's not like there's this big push for transhumanism, but they'll point to, you know, some article in a science magazine every three years will be like, are cybernetics the next big frontier of human evolution? Because the science magazines need people to buy them in airports to keep reading them. So they put flashy stories on the cover and people will be like, ah, see, the New World Order is pushing a, a transhumanist agenda. They want to suck all your brains up into the cloud and they want to inject microchips into you through the vaccine. It's like, dog, it ain't, it ain't that deep. Yeah, like P B. Parker. I almost said Peter B. Parker. Um, B. Parker, it ain't that, like, it's just a giant Lego toy. It's just a, a, a pirate with a mech suit that is made out of a ship. Like, it's just, it's a clever, th like, what are we talking about? But Shakespeare, superheroes, Shaq, Gandalf, Abraham Lincoln, the Statue of Liberty, they all start arguing and begin to disband until Lord Business's henchmen show up and the movie subtly suggests that everyone remarkable throughout all history and imagination is at war with God. Some what? escape. <laughs> <laughs> but many are captured and brought back to Lord Business's think tank. The think tank is like a prison for master builders. It's where all their creative energy is harvested from them, and that's where all the instructions in the Lego world come from. It's strikingly similar to the harvesting fields in the Matrix. And interestingly enough, the original concept of the Matrix had machines harvesting the human's conscious energy, but that was thought to be too complex for the movie. So they changed it to human beings just being batteries. This is because this movie and The Matrix are both telling the same story. So we learned that the instructions <laughs> didn't come from outside the Lego world or anyone who created the Legos. Any of the unique pieces weren't made for any special purpose or design. They just came from talented Lego characters who were forced to do Lord Business's bidding because he's so unoriginal that he has to steal it from them. After the LGBT world is destroyed, the master built- What? The LGBT world is destroyed because it went to war with God. What the fuck? Builders who haven't been captured regroup to hatch their plan. Dog. Emmett says that if they all work together, they can save the universe. Not the maker of their universe. He can't save it. Only the collective efforts of the creation does. And how do they do this? They follow the instructions. They play by the rules to infiltrate Lord Business's institution. They become a counterfeit, a wolf in sheep's clothing. I would compare this to how NGOs sometimes hijack a legitimate cause or how radical ideologies will claim to have a monopoly on compassion or love what? or how much of the church has been hollowed out by social justice, what? replacing conviction or any need for a safe- Dog, can you give me like one example of what the fuck you're talking about? Like just one. He's just saying these things with literally no examples for what he's talking about. What? Savior. Joe Dax, thank Lewis's you very much for blown. gifting a tier one sub uh, to life science. Robot servants are gullibly transfixed by a culturally relevant song, much like this movie, and they're too distracted to recognize that an insurgency is occurring right in front of them, and that's why you are losing all of your institutions. Next, <laughs> Emmett and Lucy have a white culture is being undermined, just like this children's movie. Uh...
a heart to heart. If we merge our brains with computers and accept a neural link, our brains would have more than just access to all the processing power and all the stored knowledge of all humanity. Aside from being able to send signals out, what's preventing something from being able to send signals in? Maybe even hijacking our system entirely, which in this case is our brain. And aspects of this technology already exist. We've been sending complex signals directly into the brain for a while. Even in high school, I remember watching a video of a blind cat with a video camera attached to its head, having the signal transmitted directly into the cat's brain, so that the camera acted as an artificial eye. Imagine what that cat would have gone through if instead of hooking it up to a, a camera's live feed, thank you very much, Rohack, for Park following. Simulator. Maybe all of your senses could get bypassed, and you could be led to believe you saw or heard anything that was suggested to you. Who's to say your own thoughts and internal monologue would even be your own, and not just some Chinese algorithm? Again, think of what the movie is implying about our reality. Pretty, pretty good. There's multiple it's not gods, implying anything, and the you one that came from what? the other knows better. He says to his father, you can't expect me to resist playing with all of this, as if it's the father's fault. He has no culpability for his actions, and he believes that what happens to the creation isn't meant to what? be taken seriously. Our lives are just a game, we're toys, and whether our world is pulled apart and destroyed doesn't matter. What the fuck? The man upstairs begins to pull apart all the hybrid creations and restore everything to its original state. And this is the- Dude, your, your grasp on tone, I understand why you stopped making movies because your grasp on tone is dog shit, homie. Just swelling this epic music and then showing off Hiroshima survivors after you're making a point about the Lego movie. And then just going right back to the Lego movie, like, what is? This is your this is your brain on conspiracy theories, kids. Like, this is this is what happens to it. Then Emmett returns to the Lego verse as a fully realized god. Then we get to the final confrontation between Emmett and Lord Business. Okay, then by that standard, all the other master builders would also be gods. So it's just like a world of gods. Like this this weird trying to make Emmett into a god thing is just like ridiculous between Antichrist and God. Logan and Mansion Games, I wish I knew. I have no idea. God must redeem himself to Lucifer. Outside of the Legoverse, the man upstairs realizes that he has become the villain in his son's story. He receives his son's judgment and begins to play along with him. And inside the Legoverse, Emmett, while glowing like the morning star, says, you don't have to be the bad guy. You're special and so am I. So is everyone. So the Lord receives his status from Emmet. The Lord partakes in the forbidden fruit and they embrace. The usurper is not cast out. Lucifer gets to eat his cake and have it too. He gets to overthrow and betray God, but then also gets to redeem God. Lord Business goes to disable the crazy glue and he's warned it'll explode. But of course they don't die. It does blow up, but only the tyrannical aspects of the Lego verse is destroyed and the utopia is ushered in. The man upstairs sprinkles mineral spirits onto the Lego verse to undo the effects of the crazy glue. Because he had the antidote all along. He was just holding out on everyone. Since no one can sin anyway or do anything wrong, there's no need or such thing as justice. That's just the man upstairs being angry and jealous anyway. When I first started watching the film, I thought it was going to be just typical Hollywood communist gobbledygook about how <laughs> We should all share and nothing belongs to anyone. But while I continued watching it, I realized that it contained the most concentrated distillation of the Luciferian worldview that I'd ever observed. And it was so brazenly on the nose and in your face. It is so like it's it's like we're able to laugh at this, but this is it's like genuinely sad, right? That you can't watch the Lego movie without going this is a and a very I can't do like quite as monotone as him. I'll try I'll try doing as monotone as him. This is a distillation of the Luciferian worldview in as clear a way as I've ever seen in the Lego movie. It's like how like you can't enjoy the Lego movie without being like Well, of course this is Luciferianism. When you look at it, of course, this is this is Luciferianism, and uh, these are these are demons that we're seeing here, people. It's like, are you? Well, come on, come on. There were several times I had to get up and walk around just because of the weight of what they were suggesting. As much as the movie did make me laugh, it was also sincerely exhausting and demoralizing. <laughs> this 
grown man. Just like this is real Jordan Peterson shit. This grown man watching this film for babies. It's a good film. Don't get me wrong. But like and having to pause it and get up and just like I'm picturing him pacing back and forth across the room. Just just furrowing his brow and doing that stupid thing Andrew Tate does with his hands. It's just like the, the weight of this is so it's so severe. It's like when you when you really think about the weight of the Lego movie and and the way it in interprets the luciferian myth of cultural marxism so many young men are watching the lego movie and they're they're going to think that everyone and everything is awesome i can't i can't patrick w dune i can't do a tate impression tate's voice is so awful the only thing i can do two i can say two things as andrew tate walter and Bugatti. And that's it. Just water and Bugatti. That's all I can say. Thinking about it as much as I did felt like staring into the abyss or like I was writing my own screw tape letters. I had a fear that I would... Thinking about the Lego movie as much as I did it felt like staring into the abyss. I... Explain what the movie meant and people would watch it and say... Oh. Oh well, I never understood why I liked that movie so much, and now I now I understand. And then they would become fully self-actualized Luciferians, and that certainly wasn't my intention. My reason for making this video has been to expose what the movie is. It's a powerful analogy in favor of one side's perspective, which Keep I think is Keep this guy far away from the sequel. Thank I don't you think again. There's anything so wrong with liking the movie, but I do think we should at least be aware of what it's saying. I worry that it isn't entirely fair to be embedding this kind of messaging into kids' movies so that they're led along into believing these things without understanding where the idea... He, see, here's the thing. He's not actually talking about the, the, the lessons that it's trying to tell. He's not going over those because if he was... The things that he is leading to, and again, he's, he's using kind of coded language and, and coddling his points, but what he's inferring is that things like acceptance, diversity... Uh, accepting people as like different and unique and, and celebrating those differences and those being a good thing and multiculturalism. He's trying to subtly infer and the people who already believe like him will pick up on this, that those are bad things, but he won't explicitly say that because that would open him up to very obvious criticism for, for pretty obvious reasons. Um, yeah, man. Wow. What a, who does it come from? I also think many people aren't aware that we are all in a position where we have a choice to make. And so it's better that we make an informed choice. My hope is that explaining the movie and providing these contrasting worldviews has helped clarify this choice. Being that I disagree with the underlining worldview of the movie, there is a Absolutely lot that I could be critical not. of. But where I think the analogy really falls apart is when it comes to the glue. The glue is inevitable. None of us will escape it. Every one of us will die. And the movie sets it up so that it's a bad thing that only happens in one direction, while destruction is depicted as being perfectly fine. But being set into something eternally doesn't need to be a punishment, and I don't mean that in a look on the bright side kind of way. You get to pick the direction of your life. It's one way or the other, and it really is that simple. When your physical life ends, your spiritual life will continue, and the soul that you became will continue to move in that direction outside of time forever. You, you will talking? be locked into whatever bearing you've calibrated your life towards while you were here. That's the glue. It isn't something that God just arbitrarily does for his own insecurity. It's the cause and effect of universal moral law. It's the consequence of your own free will. And God can't be blamed for what you choose because without free will, love wouldn't exist. What? And contrary to what the serpent says, we don't get to have it both ways. It's never too late to change your bearing and set your course. But be assured that we will all face uh, judgment for what we choose. And that's either a terrifying thing or a celebration. If you want to evaluate my conclusions about the analogy for yourself, uh, I would encourage you to reread the Garden of Eden story and watch the movie with the following character key in mind. And then tell me what you think. So thanks for making it this far. I hope I gave you guys something to consider. You did not. You did not. I gotta know. What are you Lego pilled? Ugh. Um, I'm sure this is gonna be a great 
uh, change up to my algorithm. My algorithm, by the way, on my main channel, no idea what to do with me. It, it's just completely borked right now. Thank <laughs> you.